Sonar is something that absolutely fascinates me. It's a way to see while blind. Submarines have no windows on board. They have no idea what's going on around them, if not for sonar. You can only see visually a few meters. Radar doesn't work underwater. The only thing you have is sound. That's it. You rely on these sounds to survive. Without them, you're done. But first, our sponsor, Keeps. I'll be honest, ever since I made the first advertisement for Keeps, I've been somewhat worried about losing my own hair. I've looked at my hairline several times in the mirror while getting ready in the morning, and the fact that two out of every three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the age 35 is scary. I'm getting close to that age. If you want to keep your hair, prevention is key. The sooner you start, the more you'll save. And with Keeps treatments, 66% of men will experience hair regrowth. Keeps has revolutionized the way men are treated for hair loss, as you no longer have to go into a doctor's office. It's all online. And you don't have to go broke avoiding going bald. So, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash covercabal, or click the link in the description, and you'll receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash covercabal. Sonar can most easily be broken down into two categories, active and passive. Active is what you hear in the movies, the basic and actually, active sonar is often much more complex than that, playing a mix of different frequencies, and could sound something like this. These varying frequencies are designed to give you much more information than the basic ping you hear in the movies, but basically, it's just a loud pulse sent out, which hopefully bounces off your target, then returns where you can hear it. Active sonar can be extremely useful, as it can instantly give you the location of objects. However, Doing this will also alert everyone around you to your presence. Because of this, submarines will rarely use active sonar. Instead, they use a second category, passive sonar. Passive sonar is just listening for sounds, not emitting any yourself. This way you can remain hidden. There are lots of sounds you can hear to identify targets. You can hear an enemy's own active sonar running, the sounds of their propellers, the sounds of the water passing over their hull, or even mechanical sounds coming from inside the ship or submarine. To do this, submarines have extremely sensitive microphones, or more accurately, hydrophones, which listen in all directions. Now naturally, there will be a blind spot behind the hydrophone as the hull is blocking it, so most submarines have several hydrophone arrays spread across its hull. There is another problem with listening directly behind the submarine, as the propeller disturbs the water, making it difficult to detect sounds in that direction. This is called its baffles. To get around this, Many submarines, and even surface ships, have a towed sonar array, which is a long cable stretching several hundred feet or even over a mile behind the boat. This is far enough away from the propeller to detect sounds in that blind spot. Towed arrays are great, but they cannot be used all the time. In shallow waters, they can drag across the sea floor, or even be torn apart at high speeds or while maneuvering. But this allows you to listen to sounds coming from different directions. This information can be manipulated and stretched out horizontally. Then vertically, you can display how these sounds are changing over time. This is called a waterfall display. With this information, you can get a better idea of how objects are moving relative to you. If a sound or contact is not changing direction or bearing, it could mean either the object is too far away to notice a slight change or is headed directly toward or away from you. If its bearing begins to change more and more rapidly, this could mean you are getting closer. And when that change in bearing begins to slow, you are getting further away again. You could think of it like when you're in a car. When you see another vehicle on the other side of the road coming toward you, its direction or bearing relative to you changes very slowly at first. As you get closer, it begins to change more rapidly until you pass, where its change in bearing begins to slow down again. So all this information is great, but it doesn't tell you what the sound is, how far away it is, or how fast it's moving. This first method of passive sonar is called broadband. Another important method is narrowband sonar. This can be thought of like a microscope. It allows you to look closely and analyze a contact and see what it's made up of. Narrowband looks at certain frequencies of sound. Different ships, submarines, even living creatures, such as fish and whales, make sounds at different frequencies. With ships and submarines, their propeller turning will create a sound of a specific frequency. So do different gears, pumps, and other machinery on board. These are called their harmonic or fundamental components. This can be used to identify what is making that sound. 
Most navies record and keep databases on what frequencies, different ships, submarines, and even sea life create. These can then be compared and figure out what is creating that sound. So now you know what direction the sound is and what is creating that sound, but you still don't know how far away it is. You know it's somewhere along this line, but not exactly where. You might think you can tell by how loud the sound is. However, many factors such as ambient noise, temperature of the water, and others can change the volume, so it's not a great indicator. To find range, you need more information. You can typically get the speed information from the sound that the propeller makes. The faster it turns, the faster the contact is moving. These pieces of information lead into what is called target motion analysis, or TMA. At first, you might think the contact is where all these lines converge, and that actually would be true if the contact isn't moving. However, it's almost never this easy. With the bearing and speed known, you can begin to try to find a course that matches, like solving a puzzle. Making this even more complex is when a contact changes speed or course, which will throw everything off. But once solved, you will not only know what the contact is, but also its location, course, and speed. Today, computers are able to do a lot of this legwork for you by automating the process. They can automatically detect, track, identify, and do TMA. This along with a skilled sonar operator can double check and verify information. The LWWAA, or Lightweight Wide Aperture Arrays on the Virginia class can even estimate range passively by triangulation, using the slight differences in bearing between each sensor. However, in real life, the situation becomes exponentially more complex, as sound often does not travel in a straight line underwater. Changes in temperatures of the water will have an impact on how the sound travels. Sound can also bounce off the surface of the water and the sea floor. Also, the ocean isn't flat, so you need to search at different angles. Broadband sonar displays can show multiple elevations and depressions, so instead of just one 360 degree view, you can have four, each looking at a different angle. There is also a lot of other sounds in the ocean, not just the target you are looking for. Civilian ships, whales, fish, and other sea life, seismic sounds such as earthquakes, and even the weather above, like rain or thunder. And all these sounds have to be identified so that you are aware of your surroundings. So with everyone listening so carefully, it's important for your own submarine to remain as quiet as possible. Modern submarines are often designed from the ground up to be as silent as possible. They will often have a rubber-like coating to absorb sounds. Engines, pumps, and anything else that creates noises are isolated using shock absorbers to dampen the sound. Propellers are specifically shaped and designed and can be ran at lower speeds as to not create more noise by cavitation and much more. Design of propellers is extremely fascinating. Propellers spinning rapidly creates a large change in pressure to the water. When this happens, small voids or bubbles can be formed. The creation and then popping of these emits sound. This is called cavitation. So to remain silent, a submarine needs to avoid cavitating. Running the propeller at slower speeds creates less change in pressure, eliminating cavitation. But you can't always travel at such low speeds. So propellers are shaped specially to try to limit this. So much so that their very shape is often classified. The screws of American subs, like the Los Angeles class, are almost always hidden from view, and very few pictures of them exist. Relatively recently, a whole new method of propulsion has been introduced to submarines, the pump jet. Pump jet reduces cavitation and overall noise by having a shroud and also raising the internal dynamic pressure. This allows submarines to run at much faster speeds while still remaining silent. Pump jets have become extremely popular in recent years, being installed on most new nuclear-powered submarines of the US, UK, France, and Russia. You also need the crew to minimize noise. Singing or talking by the crew is not likely to be heard, unlike how it's portrayed in the Hunt for Red October. But if it's broadcasted over the speaker system attached to the submarine, that transient can be heard. Different sonar operators have even described being able to hear commands given over an enemy's PA system, such as announcing a shift change. But any bangs or noises by the crew, such as running a faucet, dropping something, even closing a toilet lid, can possibly be heard by the enemy. This is called ultra quiet, where you limit anything that can make any noise at all. They'll even use paper plates while eating to limit any sounds. So there's a lot to sonar. It's such a fascinating topic, hearing about how they can get so much information simply from sound. I want to give a big thanks to Jive Turkey, who helped look over this script for accuracy. I'm a big fan of his and I love his videos. 
He was a sonar tech, and now he has a YouTube channel talking about different aspects of sonar and submarines, and plays different submarine games like Cold Waters. If you don't know who he is, definitely go over and check out his channel. And if you can, check out his Patreon as well. He creates a lot of cool stuff.